Hello everyone. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. We're continuing our study of limits today. In this lesson, lesson three, which I call evaluating limits analytically, part two, we're going to learn two very important trig limits and then we're going to apply them using, trig, using limit properties. Now both of these limits can be proved with a theorem that we're going to learn soon. And they can be proved with a theorem that we'll learn again later in the year. So for now, we're just going to take them on faith. We're going to, well, we're going to graph them, and we're going to estimate the limit, and then later on we can come back and prove it more rigorously. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to copy this over to my, to my little drawing pad here. I'll paint that. And it asks us to graph in a calculator y equals sine of x over x. So I'm going to use our Desmos graph. Okay, and we can look and see what's happening. So we are supposed to, we are supposed to be estimating a limit. Ooh. And just put that there. Okay, so we're supposed to be estimating a limit as x goes to zero. So what is happening? What is happening as oh, as x comes this way? Oh, I need to put it on brush. That's why it's not working. There we go. So as the x values are traveling towards zero, the y values are approaching one. Likewise, but it's not enough, we've got to check it from both sides. As the x values are going towards zero from the right, the y value is also going towards one, right? So we're going to claim that the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x over x is indeed one. Now, if we were to go right here and look, there's actually a hole there because if we plug in zero for x, you would get a divide by zero. So the actual value, we can't evaluate by plugging in, but we can see from the graph that the limit appears to be one. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so now we've got to use our calculator to graph y equals 1 minus cosine of x over x. 1 minus cosine of x over x. And I'll add this as well to our little figure here. Okay, so again, what if we try direct substitution? If I try and plug this x in directly here, if I try and plug in 0 for x, well, the cosine of 0 is 1. So I have 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0. Not going to work. So we're trying to find the limit right there. Oh, need my paintbrush. All right, so as x approaches from the left, the y value is approaching 0. As x approaches 0 from the right, the y value is also approaching 0. That tells me that this must be a limit of zero, right? So we have two important limits that we have learned today. We have learned that the limit as that theta approaches zero of sine of theta over theta is zero. No, it's not, sorry. Erase that one. That one was one, right? One. And the limit as theta approaches zero of one minus cosine of theta over theta, that is zero. Okay, so here's a couple of key things we want to look out for. First of all, it has to be theta to zero. We're going to see some limits that look really similar to this in the coming days, and they are not one and zero because it's not theta going to zero. The other thing is we need the same thing there and there. That's what it's contingent about. We'll talk more about that in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some practice problems where we use our properties of limits and some algebra and then apply these principles, these uh, limits that we have now shown to be one and zero. 
Oh, another important thing to remember, we're not saying that the sine of x over x is 1. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm saying that the, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, that is 1. Very different than just saying sine of x over x is equal to 1. That's not true. All right, so here's our first problem. Now, what I just said was that it's extremely important that this and this match. And if they do, then this limit should be 1. And the way that I'm going to show that is I'm going to say, well, if we're taking a limit as x approaches 0, then really this is kind of a composition. Uh, we're using our co limit composition property here. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 5 of x, well, what, what is that equal to? Well, that is equal to 0. Not exactly 0, but it's equal to a number going towards 0, right? So that's the same thing if I, if I just let theta equal 5x. Well, then the limit as x approaches 0, my theta my, is definitely going to 0, right? Do we agree? So I can just rewrite this like that and then directly apply that limit. And I know I'm kind of waving my hands at this and, and you know maybe not making it too clear, but I don't want to make it overly complicated. Because the only thing I really want you to know is that if these two things here are the same and they are going to zero, then that's what the limit equals. And, and there, could, there could be a lot of different ways they could be going to zero. All right, so um, let's do another problem. Alright, next example. So we said that it was really important that the angle here be the same here, right? And that they be going to zero. Well, not quite the same, is it? Well, I'm going to do some steps to prove something, okay? Uh, once I've proved it, then we can just jump straight to it, alright? So we're going to do a little bit of work. I want you to have this in your notes so that you know why this works. But then you can either show these steps or skip them when you have to do a problem like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a limit property that says I can bring out a constant, okay? And if you think about it, there's really just a one-fourth here. And so the problem is really just the sine of 5x over x. Because this constant, this one-fourth is a constant, right? Can you see the one over four? Now. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 5. And I can multiply a fraction by 1. I'm not changing its value, right? All right, so then this becomes 1 fourth um, times, well, you know what? Actually, let's not do that. Let's, let me erase that one. Let's bring out this 5 here, right? So this, I'm going to bring out that 5, so it becomes 5 fourths on the outside. Then I have the limit as x approaches 0, and I brought that 5 out, right? And I can do that. I can bring out, you know, because that's 5 over 1 times 1 over 5. And I'm going to leave that other 5 on the bottom, right? Okay, so now, as you can see, I've got a pretty nice little situation here because that limit we know. We know that as long as these two things are the th same, and if they're going to zero, and since x is going to zero, 5x is going to zero, we can say that this limit is 1. So this problem is really just 5 fourths times 1, which is, of course, 5 fourths. All right? Okay, we have another example. So, example C. Maybe you'd like to see that letter so you can keep track of which one I'm doing better. That'd probably be good, right? Okay. All 
All right, we have the limit as x approaches zero of sine of two x over three x. Now, earlier we saw that as long as you would, as long as they're not the same. Let me bring that back up again. So in the previous problem, we saw that when, it was, when they were not the same, 5x over 4x, the answer just ended up being what? 5 over 4. So we're hoping that something similar can happen here. Something that, so I'm going to again do a bunch of work to show something that we hope would happen. And then you can use that or skip it next time. So I'm going to multiply. First of all, I'm going to bring out that 5. That 5 has no business being inside that limit. Don't need it. All right, and I'm going to multiply by 1 over x on top and bottom. So I'm multiplying by 1 over x over 1 over x, which is still, I'm multiplying by the same thing over itself. So I'm just multiplying by a funny form of 1. So that becomes over x. And then this becomes the sine of 3x over x. All right, we know from our limit properties that I can split apart this limit. So do you see that I've got a, I've got a quotient of limits here, right? And I can split apart a limit on add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've still got this pesky little 5 hanging out here. I don't even know why I put that in there. It's annoying. But I did. So we got to deal with it. Limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x over x. And I'm going to divide that by the limit as x approaches 0, uh, the sine of 3x over x. And you may have heard me mention that whenever you're dealing with multiplication and division with limits, uh, it can be a little hairy. Uh, the thing you got to look out for is just make sure that you don't get anything like a zero in the denominator or uh, infinity. Yeah, but otherwise, it's perfectly safe. Okay, so this 5, well, that's still there. Now, we know this one, right? We know this limit. What is, what is that going to be? Well, if these were both 2x's, we'd say that it was 1. But because this is twice as much as that, we can go through all those steps we did on the previous problem, but I know you don't want to. It's just going to be a 2. So that's going to be a 2. And then on the bottom here, you know, we know this limit. This limit down here is going to be a 3. So the answer is simply 10 thirds. OK? What do you think about that? All right, let's go do another example. Let me clear this off. Oh, this one looks a little bit more fun. All right. So we ha we get to think. See, that's what I like. I like making making us think. That's much more fun. I'm gonna get it on pin mode there. Okay, so. Um, I've got this sine of x and then x squared, you know, x squared, just make a little note here. You know, we do this kind of thing a lot in calculus. We think about x squared as x times x. So I'm going to split that apart like that. I'm going to call that the sine of x over x times 1 minus cosine of x over x. And that's the same thing, right? When you multiply fractions, you multiply top times top, and you know this would have a, a grouping symbol. The, the fraction bar is a grouping symbol. Then x times x would give you x squared. Well, now I'm going to use my limit properties that says I can split apart a product. So that the limit of a product is the product of a limit. There we go, splitting it apart into two limits that I take the product of. And we just learned both of these, right? We learned what this one is. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x? Well, that's 1, right? And what about that one? The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. Well, that's 0. So what we really have is 1 times 0, which is 0, or a number approaching 0, I should say. OK, so I think, if I remember right, you get a turn here. 
We have one, two, three, ooh, four problems for you to do. And then we'll go over them. Um, so pause the video here. I think this is uh, the only practice set you have. So go ahead and, I know it's numbered wrong, but pause the video and complete those four problems, please, from your notebook on your own. And then unpause it and we'll go over them. Welcome back. Uh, first of all, this should be practice 3.1. I think I had another practice in there, but I decided it was kind of overkill. I need to go and change my numbers. All right, but uh, let's go over the practice 3.1a. All right, you had the limit as x approaches 0 of 7 times 1 minus cosine x over 4x. All right, well, this is actually really close to exactly the way we want it. I'm just going to pull out 7 fourths because those are constants. And then I have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. Well, we know this limit, right? That limit is 0. And that's just one you're going to have to have memorized. That's kind of the story here. You need to memorize these two special limits. So that's 0. OK, so that's the answer to the first one. And let's take a look at the second one. All right, well, we got cosecant x minus 1. Uh, cosecant is 1 over sine, so this, that might have something to do with this. Before we go all crazy here, um, especially when we're dealing with trig limits, I really like to always remind us that we need to try direct substitution first. And shame on me for not testing every single time and just knowing that it wasn't going to work. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, if you plug in pi over 4 for x here, I think we're going to get a value. So let's just directly substitute this. So we're trying, oh, again, I forgot to brush it. All right, cosecant of pi over 4. And I don't have to put that in parentheses, but I will. All right, so cosecant is sine flipped over. The sine of pi over 4, remember, we I think we reviewed this in our last lesson, the uh, unit circle. We've got an angle right here at 0, an angle at pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. The sine of pi over 4 and cosine are the same. They're both square root of 2 over 2. So if I flip them, this becomes 2 over the square root of 2. Okay, so it's 2 over the square root of 2 minus 1. Now, we could probably play with this a little while. We could, we could try and rationalize that, but this is really fine. I'm going to call that my answer. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, problem letter C. Okay, we've got a sum here. Um, you know, if I could get sine of x over x, then I would consider that in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this x into each one of those. So whenever you have a binomial over a monomial, or any size polynomial over one term, I can divide that term into each, I can divide that denominator into each term one at a time. So 2x divided by x is 2. And then I give sine of x over x here. I don't know how to divide that, though. OK, now we can split apart this limit. So I have the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 plus the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. All right, so let's talk about this first one. Uh, I think we've only seen this a couple of times, but it's important to realize that this, the limit of a constant is the limit, it's, is the constant itself. So it's just a 2. You can think about it with direct substitution. It's just that there's no x to plug into. Or if you think about y equals 2, the graph, it's just a horizontal line at 2. So as x approaches 0, the y is still approaching 2. And we know what this is. It's 1, so 2 plus 1 is 3. 
Okay, uh, last one, I think, right? Ooh, tangent of X. What was I thinking? What did I do to y'all? Well, you know me. I love to challenge you with these practice problems because I really want you getting a chance to be a real mathematician, to encounter something and say, hey, wait a minute, maybe I can figure this out. And so hopefully some of you did. If you plug in zero, and I know I'm bad about remembering to do that, because I, I, but I want you to do it, always try direct substitution. If you try direct substitution, the tangent of zero is zero. Remember, tangent is sine divided by cosine. Uh, the sine of zero is zero. The cosine of zero is one. So zero divided by one is zero. So tangent of zero is zero. Over zero, that is indeterminate. But, you know, let's see what we can do here. Well, hmm. You know, about the only thing I can think to do is to rewrite tangent as sine of x over cosine of x. And if you did that, you probably thought, like most of my students in the past do, they probably kept that as a stacked fraction. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty yucky. There's a couple ways you could avoid that step if you realize that this is the tangent of x times 1 over x, right? Uh, that, would, that might really help you see a better way to do this. Um, from this. At this moment here, we could multiply by cosine of x over itself on top and bottom, or just cosine of x on top and bottom. Uh, or remember that if you have a fraction divided by a whole number, this whole number just multiplies to the bottom. Uh, so however you want to go about doing it, it, it really helps if you could have just skipped straight to this step here, that it's cosine x times x on the bottom. If you found yourself in this situation here, um, again, I hope you would remember that when you have a fraction divided by a whole number, you just multiply that whole number to the denominator of the fraction, but, you know, Using our techniques that we studied in, you know, algebra class, you would do something like that. Those would cancel out, and that would end up giving you sine of x over x times cosine x in, this, in that case. Okay, well, this is actually a product of two things, so let's, let me make that explicit, that this is 1 over cosine of x times sine of x over x. So 1 over cosine of x, well that's 1 over the, the limit. I, I can do that. I could, se I could separate them out and that one I can do. So let me just show that work. That would be good, right? And then I've got times the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Alright, so the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over cosine. Well, if I direct substitute in 0 for x now, the cosine of 0 is 1, so that's just 1 divided by 1. And the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x, well, that's just 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. So it turns out that all that worked again, and it was the same as sine of x over x. Okay, so that's the end of another lesson. Good luck on the homework assignments, and reach out to me if you need help, and uh, I'll see you next time.